this video, you will learn about the ANSYS Composite Cure Simulation, or ACCS, tool that enables you to analyze curing processes, for example, those used for composite structures. This video demonstrates a cure simulation of a rib used in aerospace applications. First, I define materials. ACCS installs a material library enabling you to perform simulations without a separate material creation step. Load the material into the project. The material contains properties such as thermal conductivity, specific heat, cure kinetic equation, and resin properties. In this example, I use ANSYS Composite Prep Post to generate a quasi-isotropic layup of the rib to generate a layered solid model for use in a downstream analysis. The first step of a full cure simulation is the chemical thermal analysis of the curing process, simulated via a transient thermal analysis. In this case, I pass the layered solid model from ACP to mechanical. Define the thermal environment, including the initial temperature and the temperature cycle of the curing process, heating, constant temperature, and cooling. I also specify general analysis settings, such as a constant time step size. I apply a convection condition to the inner surface to define the heat transfer from the environment into the composite part. The convection condition includes the film coefficient and ambient temperature, as shown in the graph and tabular data. In the same way, I apply a convection condition to the outer surface. You can enable the chemical thermal solver of the cure simulation by adding the ANSYS Composite Cure Simulation object to the thermal analysis from the curing toolbar, provided with the ACCS installation. Before solving, I add results of interest. The curing tool provides some additional result entities which display the outcome of the chemical thermal analysis, material state, degree of cure, glass transition temperature, and heat of reaction. Finally, I solve the thermal analysis. The plots defined in the previous steps enable me to view the results. I can also check the ACCS results, such as degree of cure and material state. The thermal analysis is now coupled with a stepwise structural analysis to predict the development of residual stresses and process-induced distortions. First, I sync the initial temperature and the solution steps of the thermal and structural analyses. The environmental temperature is again set to 20 degrees Celsius, and there are three solution steps of equal time step size. Results from the thermal analysis, such as temperature and degree of cure, serve as the initial inputs of the structural analysis. Ensure that the results of all substeps are imported correctly. I restrict rigid body motion by adding a displacement condition to three points at three different corners of the structure. I also simulate the interaction between the tooling surface and the composite part. I add a frictionless support on the outer surface of the composite part. As in the thermal analysis, I enable curing simulation in the structural analysis. To obtain results for process-induced distortions, I simulate the demolding of the composite part from the tooling. For that, I release the outer surface for the last solution step using the Support Remover object from the curing toolbar. Before solving, I add result plots such as total deformation. As in the thermal analysis, 
I can also plot other curing results. I solve the structural analysis. The total deformation clearly shows process-induced distortions typical for L profiles. Here, the deformations are scaled by a factor of 43. Some warping is exhibited, as is the spring effect. The result can be used to compensate for the process-induced distortions for my initial design. Simulations like this enable you to manufacture composite parts within very tight tolerances, without the need for tests. This concludes the ANSYS Composite Cure Simulation Tool demonstration video. Thank you.